your own message. What was challenging? <laughs> And what did you find yourself in this week for anyone? Because um, you're like, I was thinking about the different shapes of letters. Like, what, what were you thinking about when you were writing the message? I was just thinking, okay, so the box with the that's all I was thinking. What represents what? Did you find it hard to think about like the message you were trying to write about? Yeah. No. Yeah, I did. Okay. Say no and say why yes. Why no? Why yes? Mm -hmm. Um, because for me, I already knew what the message was going to be, and it was just a matter of finding the adequate letters to express it. <laughs> Instead of thinking of the message, I had to think of like I each was, like, letter. Each letter, I was like, like if you want to write a seven, you need like. And even you were able to do it effectively, but you said like you thought about it beforehand and then you were holding on to that message in your head, it still kind of gets at the point of like if there was this cognitive jumping back and forth, like the message you want to convey, what letters would it take to form that word, how do you form those letters. Um, and you can imagine that, you know, even you know, as fully developed adults, that like that still was a lot of juggling. That that's the things that are going on for our students when they're learning how to encode language, um, and that they don't have the uh, highly developed executive processing functions that allow us to jump back and forth between tasks. So you imagine how much more difficult it'd be for them. But about the encoding part, what was what did you think about when you tried to read it? Decoding part. I said that backwards. <coughs> the decoding part when you're trying to read the message that someone wrote. Oh yeah. Um. Well, some of the symbols she used were ones I had used in my message, so it was a lot easier to decode those um, than the ones I hadn't used that she used. That's interesting. So your familiarity with those symbols what allowed you to get it quicker. That's cool. I thought it was harder to read the message than it was to write it, um, because at first I tried doing it without writing the letters underneath, like in real human letters. <laughs> and so I... I tried doing it just by memory, and then I realized that wasn't going to work out, so then I had to go back and write the letters as each one, what they meant. Did that make sense? <coughs> yes. <laughs> Not really. Okay. I couldn't I tell what an assembles was. Like, I had to, like, look at it a couple times, and like, oh, I, I guess it's that letter. Mm -hmm. Which that really gets back to the point that we talked about um, when we did letter recognition, and just that, like, especially for those you working with the younger students this summer, like, not just that a K is called a K and makes a sound, usually. Um, but they're like actually recognizing the shape of the letter, like it becomes so automatic to us as adults that it's easy to forget that that in and of itself is a learning process. So you guys are probably able to make a lot of connections to this uh, to your work this summer, but as we jump into writing, I like this exercise because it helps us think, think about how deceptively complicated the task of writing is, even when you're forming a simple two-word message like this. Um, and that thinking about what's challenging in this task is going to tie to the types of things that we work on with our students. And when we look at students writing and recognize how students progress from writing what might just look like a bundle of scribbles to a tightly formed essay that they're going to write later on when they're older. Um, so this is our literacy framework here at the Institute. Um, and I actually don't like this graph very much because it doesn't put writing on here, but the point that they do make that it is fair is that writing is the opposite of a lot of the reading skills. And someone brought up the point of that like the ones that, that you have written, was Joe, right? That the ones that you had written were easier to recognize, and you can see that in a lot of ways there's going to be a connection between students, even in the, these like what we might think of as like a pre-reading stage, um, connections between the skills that lead to reading and the skills that lead to writing. That getting them both ways uh, is going to reciprocate off of each other and make it easier um, for them to learn. The next slide I love, this is like, so we get some of these slides prepared, and this is the most ridiculous goal slide I've ever seen, so just take it in and appreciate what a full slide this is. I'm going to share with you. These are our goals for today. <laughs> um, and one thing I've started doing with some of my other sessions I wanted you guys to is that, like, the point of being in an IL session um, is that you're going to develop the skills and knowledge you need to support your students. It should really result in students learning. I hope that you enjoy 
the intellectual exercise of being in here and learning these really what I think are interesting things. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, it's about what can our students do as a result of what we're doing in these sessions. So um, I redid their slide. What will all students be able to do as a result of the work that we're doing here today? Um, understand that writing conveys meaning um, and express ideas using progressively more conventional writing. Um, and a lot of the work you do in UC and even lower elementary is looking at writing that may look really different from like our conception of writing or like an adult version of writing and really recognizing what are the strengths along the way and what are the, the next steps we want to work on with students. And just this understanding that especially for young kids that like what writing is and that it conveys meaning in the same way that um, oral language communicates meaning. Um, so to think about that, I want to start with just a quick exercise. Um, I'm going to show you a video of two kids and I want you to think about which of these students more understand, which of these kids more understand that print carries meaning? It might be kind of subtle. just turned one, um, so very close in age of the students you're working with. You know, Riley can't read in like what we think of as a more adult way of reading. Remember, she actually decodes print, but she really clearly understands that the words on those cards convey meaning. She's memorized some of them. There was a picture anchor there. But even though she's not yet fully a reader, she understands the purpose of print. Um, whereas Max is like, that's an awesome card. I want to put that in my mouth. Yeah. Um, which is kind of awesome. And I just like showing videos of them. Um, so that's the big picture understanding we're working on, especially for you that has to be working with really young students this uh, summer, probably not that much older than Max. Um, but that's still something you can work on, and that idea of how print works in our world and our culture um, is a really important thing for kids to understand early so they can start working on some of the things we've talked about in our decoding and our physical awareness work. Um, so to do that, um, we just want to jump into a continuum um, that looks at the development of student writing. Um, that's um, I'm not sure what's going on with student one up here, um, but before we jump into like the formalized rubric that's based on research and looking at a lot of different writing, um, I feel like there's just like this intuitive piece of what do you see that as a student is doing and what do you think a student would work on based on this. So this is just a quick sample of student writing. Um, so thinking for student two, what do you see that a student is attempting to do, what are they doing, and what might be a next step in the progression for them? Thinking about that, talk with someone around you, and then we'll be brief together. Yeah. 